Right, so the headlight's on. Looks cool, but are not as cool as I think it could look. It needs a little shroud or something, don't you think? I do. It's this kind of area behind of gappage. Not so sure where is it there. Not so sure where that's going. It looks a bit detached from the bike. So I think a little shroudage going on, and it's not as easy as it looks. Can't just bolt it onto the light. I certainly ain't going to buy one. So stick around, stay tuned, see what happens. Welcome back to the Wiz Garage. Right, so this is what I mean, shroudage. That's kind of cool on its own. And yeah, the whole detached kind of alien head thing sticking out the front, yeah, get it, looks good. But all in the back here, it just looks a bit too detached for me. I don't like it too much. I mean, it has to have that space because that's the sweep for the forks. It's being as it's mounted to the frame, but I don't know, I still could do something to cover this up. It needs a little shroud. So I'm gonna have a little play with that before I go any further. It's even got me thinking whether I want the clocks on it or not. I don't know, what do you think? I kind of like that street tracker look thing and be big going on. Not sure whether I put the clocks on or not. Don't know. I only need uh, oil light and a high beam light, really. That's all. I can make those out of things like this. Just find the feed for it and mount that. Don't know. Anyway, thinking too far ahead at the minute. Shroudage. This is what I'm thinking of a little metal shroud around that using yarn sheet metal and cardboard templated, you know, good old fashioned fabrication. Can't mount it to the light itself because the light itself is thin ABS plastic and it won't be man enough for the job. So it's got to be mounted to the bracket. Now all this beef down here is a great candidate and there's holes in there already. So I can kind of think you know, I might bring something up off that. I think the first thing before I do anything else, I've only got an hour this morning, is to bring an upright either side to here. I need two uprights sort of there facing upwards so I can then bring something across the top, make a little frame. I don't know, I'm gonna make this up as I go along. But I know first thing I need is a couple of uprights off there. Don't know where the best place for them to go. So, so to okay. get that done, I've got enough. That's left over from the trailer. Uh, when I did the trailer build, I used about 12 feet of that and it's the bottom of a table frame, big old metal table. And it was great stuff. It's just mild steel strap, good stuff. Now we'll take a nice 90 degree end and just kind of tested it by putting that in the vise, where are we? And it is quite strong, it doesn't really move much. So I'm quite happy that that will be strong enough for the job to hold a sheet metal shroud. And I've got enough in length there to do what I want to do with. Right, first of all is, uh, I'm not sure what height they need to be at the back of the light, but I do know they need a 90 degree bend at the end of each one. So I've got to just cut, literally, I want to cut 90 in that. So I'm bend it, do it properly with some heat so it doesn't stretch it or scratch it or mess around with the, metal on the back. If you heat something when you bend it, uh, the metal stays quite healthy. If you bend that cold, you will cause uh, stress fractures in the back and it won't last very long. It will shear. So later on as well, vibration will eventually shear it. So bend it hot, it's always the best way to do it, nice and cherry red. And then I'll just cut sort of six inches to give me room to lop off later. So I just need a couple of them. All right, first job, square up the end so that every measurement is square. It stands to reason, doesn't it? Okay, well I want a one inch tab bent upwards because it's going to go underneath a piece of one inch angle line so then it won't stick out, it will look nice and neat and tidy. So one inch of this, one inches, one inch of this bent up. Uh, check with your ruler, your end of your ruler is square, just make sure the end of it is square, which it is, completely flush. And then I'm going to come in, literally, a bend in a piece, this is just some kind of laws of metal work, um, a bend in a piece of quarter inch metal or eighth inch metal, sorry, is going to take up twice its own um, thickness on the curve. So if it's eighth inch, we'll just go to millimeters, make it a bit simpler because I get criticized for using Imperial. If we come to 25 mil and just nick a little line, there we go, and then come to roughly 30 mil and scrub another little line and that gives you two points and squarely does it just scribe those across as a marker and the reason you've got two is that 
the gap between those two is going to be the radius. So you put the grips on the top one uh, if you're bending that way, or the bottom one if you're bending the tab itself. So you bend from the bottom one and that will curl in and, and you'll have the full inch. If you mark your inch and then bend on the inch, you'll have less than that. So you'll see what I mean. Let's get warmed up. Yo. Even if you're not grinding, I was bung these on when heating stuff up. Just never know if some bit of stray debris kind of ignites while you're burning, lands in your orbits. Right, this is the first 90 degrees. Uh, I've got plenty of it, so I'm just going to lob that off and do another one. It took me longer than that to get the disc set up. There's one. Now interestingly enough, that radius could be a lot sharper, I'm going to hammer the back of that and try and get it a little, bit, a little bit less, but the idea of doing it that way with quite a fair radius is it remains springy, that's right, it's creaking in the grips, let's get them off, that's quite simply going to be safer than having it, because normally if you want that sharper, if you want it like that, what you do is when it's really hot, you stick a cold chisel in there and you beat a couple of lines in where you want it folded so it gives it a weak point and then you fold it you get a nice crisp fold but I don't want that I want quite a rounded radius so it acts like a spring and there you are then the springiness of the bracket absorbs any shock or impact or vibration doesn't crack Thanks. But there we go, two brackets. And the most important thing is they're identical rather than not being. The bends are right, the bends correct. So then it's got two bends in the top. Right, yeah, we've got the inch mark across there, across that way, so one inch that way. It's an inch wide. So go from the corner, which we know is square. Again, the other corner, which is because it's square, where they cross, you set the punch, that's the middle. Easy, isn't it? Set the punch once to sharpen. Simple centre punch, right in the middle. Easy. Perfect. And in the middle. You see the way the drill was slowing down, that has gone so hard from the process of heating that and bending it, that's work hardened that so much that the ends of these are really, really hard, which is why the drill is struggling to get through. So I'm going to heat them up and anneal them in a minute to re-soften them. Otherwise they'll shear and crack later on in life, which won't be very cool. I'm doing things twice.
two holes done. Right, bendage. I'll bend the top ones now. Right, quick test fit. I think the best place under the existing bracket. And that's handy to lift it up a little bit anyway. This is all good. So. Eight mil holes and eight mil bolts on it, so everything lines up. And see washers later on. There we go. No penny pit stops, I'm afraid, just me. So there we are. That radius there, the length or or, or um, extension of that radius was important. It wasn't a complete 90 because it would have been too close to this. So that's come up nice and um, upright. Now I think. I've left myself about an inch above because I'm going to flop those over now, bend those down and that will give me a flat but I want to bring them in. So that has got to just come in a little bit more. So just a little bit of dressing, it's got to bend them in and that means um, probably heat them, bend them in a little bit, both. So they both give me that. There we are, very from the front, there you go. Now I've got them in place, I can bend those tops down and that will give me two flat tabs which are nice and strong um, which I can then bolt the or sorry, weld the shroud to, or anything shroudage that's going to get made from there. Today is about brackets. Right. Just marking where they come above the light equally, so that they we fold them in. They'll be the same bend and they'll present a platform that's the same height so that whatever sheet metal shroud I put over the top will be level which is quite important I don't want to be faffing about putting washers on it to pack it up that's just lame there you go that's approximate I'm going to measure them with a ruler in a minute this curvature on the end is deliberately a slow curve quite a big radius to give it a kind of springiness so they don't crack uh, and also, what I don't want, um, I'll show you how we're going to do it in a minute, The or how I'm going to do it. I'm running out of time quickly today, 25mm. A little bit above the mark, but that's good because it gives me actually more space, not less. You can see there's a coating on these, like a, I don't know what it is. It could be a plating of some kind, but it's all coming off. So the idea is I want these nice and sharp. I want a really sharp curve on these at the top and I'll run a bead of weld along the inside of them afterwards. So I'll show you how to do it with a chisel. Cut into that first to make a weak point so they fold nice and sharp. I'll show you what we do. All right, here we are. Little makeshift anvil. Man out of a ground anchor. Pop them on there. Cold chisel, nice sharp cold chisel. And across the scribe line, Pop a good cut right in there. Need several hits to get it deep enough. And very important not to uh, have it uneven one side, deeper one than the other. What you're doing with this is you're just making an indentation along which it will fold. Um, Needs to be quite deep, probably about three mil deep, two or three mil at least, so it becomes. Stop. It becomes the point, the weakest point. Now you can, you can whizzle on there with a grinder and actually take the metal out, and that works just as well. But doing it this way, the grain of the metal, because this is factory made strap or foundry made strap, so the way that this grain goes, what I'm doing is compressing the grain, I'm squashing it down here which rather than removing it, which is what a grinder does let's get an anvil and if you just compress the grain by chiseling a dent in it it remains stronger as with anything that's forged rather than cut right, right. that's, let's get it in the light that's the kind of depth of cut and it probably needs to be about two or three mil deep and that will do the job. Heat it up and bend it.
Right, click on this one. Now, adjustable spanner under the cut to hold it. The brace on the top. Quick, 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 quick. There we go. same as well. Right. Set them cool down a bit and we'll grind them off. Right, a little bit of a bit of grindage later. And I think we may have the makings of some brackets. This is the sort of thing that just takes time. Any project's the same. Slow going. You do anything properly. Okay, set those up. Right, so that gives me now two decent sized briefy brackets that will hold a shroud of sorts on there. Uh, I can weld a bar across the top of them, piece of strap underneath them, all kinds of things. But the first thing with anything is a mount point. Before you do anything else, you've got to have some way of anchoring it to the vehicle. So they are it. And as you can see, they don't move around, they don't bend. They're not wobbly. And if I just put perhaps a little brace across them, I don't know, later on, but there we are. These I'll probably multi-drill them four times with a little four mil hole, and then I can put a sheet metal shroud across the top and plug weld up from underneath it so there's no visible signs of connection, which will look cool. And it also it holds them in position. But for now, they are it. I reckon they'll do. And they don't hit anything. out the way. A little bit more to do on them, but that's progress.